Doctor, give me the good news first. Well, this game is really fun and it's available on the Game Boy. It's cheap and easy to find and it kicks ass in every way. Super! What's the bad news? Wait, why are you putting on a glove? It's Dr. Mario for the Nintendo Game Boy from 1990. And it's always a great time to pop some pills in a puzzle game. Even though I just screwed up two obvious moves. While Dr. Mario is actually not very similar to Tetris, it's easy to compare the two because they both make excellent Game Boy puzzle games where you stack things and score points. But in Tetris, you're only stacking blocks. In this game, you're stacking drugs. So it feels edgier. And it's the kind of game they would never make anymore thanks to medical malpractice lawsuits and rising insurance costs. Now ideally you want to play Dr. Mario about two or three steps ahead, and you can do that because you always see what he's about to drop next. What pill he's about to drop. The way that you score points in this game is to eliminate viruses. They're the blinking ones. In order to do that you have to stack four of the same color on top of each other. You do not get points for clearing out non-viruses. They just get in the way, so you want to get rid of them. But beware if you turn your game into a cluster, you know what, of a mess. It's a family game. They'll stack up off the top of the screen like Tetris and it's game over, man. Game over. Gameplay speeds up over time. And there are three different speeds at which you can play Dr. Mario. You get more points if you play on the faster levels. We're just watching the medium speed here. And no, it's not a game I'm very good at. Because I've only recently started playing it, Dr. Mario is timeless. It's, it's a lot of fun. And a game I picked up for about five bucks. I'm playing it here on my Game Boy Advance SP. And it's, uh, it's a great game to take on the go with you. If you're just waiting for your meal, trying to fall asleep, or waiting for the train, Dr. Mario delivers. This can also be found on the NES, the Nintendo Entertainment System, and the Super Nintendo. The Game Boy version has a two-player mode, I did not get a chance to play with that, but I will show you the two-player mode on the NES version when I review that. However, I think the Game Boy version is the best because it's a great game on the go. Dr. Mario, like Tetris, makes for a wonderful portable game. It doesn't rely on graphics or sound to make it good, even though the music is good, and the game visually gets the point across. It's easy to see on the Game Boy screen. I feel like I'm just watching a train wreck here during editing. This is a disaster. I wish I could have played a better game for this. When the game speeds up, it's easy to make a mistake rotating and moving your pills. And also, you really have to pay attention to what combinations are available. Something I'm not doing terribly well. So this game ends in an embarrassing fashion, as the patient ODs and dies a horrible death. Here's a look at level 20 if you're really adventurous, and read the warnings, Dr. Mario should not be played with other games involving alcohol like Tapper. I should also note that you score more points if you clear out multiple viruses at once. Oh god, I've lost another patient. Why am I prescribing elephant tranquilizers for a headache? There should be a Motley Crue branded version of this game called Dr. Feelgood. But until then, we have Dr. Mario, a game that I've recently discovered and have found extremely enjoyable, although I still need to get a lot better. I recommend taking two of these, playing them in stereo, and calling someone else in the morning. It's Dr. Mario on the Nintendo Game Boy.